I recently produced a series of nine videos on using portable suitcase solar panels with your RV. I have received feedback from my subscribers, so I decided to do a tenth video about the most likely connection scenarios. If you have not yet watched my video series, I encourage you to do so, as it provides extensive background information that explains why I chose these scenarios, as well as much more information. I have also created a project webpage for this topic. I will provide a link here to the webpage as well as in the description of this video. In this video, I will present eight different connection configurations from simple to advanced from 100 watts to 400 watts of solar power. I am limiting the configurations to 400 watts as that keeps the number of panels you must set up to two. And really, if you need more than 400 watts, you should consider a more permanent setup in your RV, such as roof mounting the panels. And we should establish the scope of these connection scenarios, so here are the assumptions I will use. The connection configurations will use 100 or 200 watt Renogy suitcase solar kits with either a 10 or 20 amp charge controller. Your RV has either a factory installed Furion or SAE connector, such as those used by Zamp, or your RV does not have a factory port and you have or will install a Furion or SAE connector in your RV. The system is portable, that is, it is not permanently installed on your roof. You also have either a single or a dual battery setup in your RV. Either 2 6 volts in a series connection or 2 12 volts in a parallel connected configuration. And you do not have an inverter, nor do you need to power items such as residential refrigerators or air conditioners. You will use this system in a boondocking situation simply to maintain the battery. You should also have an understanding of series and parallel circuits. The ability to use a multimeter, while not required, is helpful as well as knowledge of basic electrical principles such as Ohm's Law. A word of caution, do not use this video alone to build your system. I cannot possibly cover every situation, yet keep this video short. The first scenario is about as basic as you can get. You simply connect the alligator clips from the Renogy solar suitcase directly to the battery. This probably works better when the battery is outside of the RV, such as in a trailer, where the battery tray is located on the tongue of the unit. You can extend the solar panel if needed, but I recommend limiting the length to 20 feet or less when using a 10 AWG extension cord. If you use a longer length, you will experience performance issues due to the excessive voltage drop. Again, consult the website for the reasons why, sources for such cables, as well as details on how to make your own. Scenario 2 is almost identical to Scenario 1, except we're using a 200 watt solar suitcase. And due to the higher currents involved, we must limit our extension cord, if we use one, to 10 feet or less. Scenario 3 is probably the most common. Here we use the RV manufacturer's installed Furion solar port. This port is limited to 10 amps and often has a 7.5 to 10 amp fuse. Many manufacturers do not actually connect the solar port to the battery, but rather leave it disconnected, so you may have to connect it to the battery. Due to the 10 amp limitation of the solar port, you must limit the solar panel to 100 watts. In reality, the Furion solar port was intended to be used with Furion 100 watt panels. You will also need an adapter cable, one that goes from the CN Linko style connector to the MC4 connectors. You may use an extension cord here as well, but like before, limit the length of a 10 AWG extension cord to 20 feet. Finally, the charge controller shipped with an energy solar kit can be either a 10 or 20 amp version. Configuration 4 is almost identical to the previous configuration, except that an SAE or ZAMP style solar inlet is installed in the RV. This requires a different adapter cable to go from SAE to MC4, and you may have to use a polarity adapter as the ZAMP specific SAE inlets have a different polarity than the other connectors. Fortunately, many of the SAE adapter kits come with a polarity adapter. 
Again, a 10 to 20 foot extension cord can be used, provided it is at a minimum of 10 AWG. Configuration 5 presents many changes. First, the charge controller is located at the RV rather than at the solar panel. This presents the advantage of minimizing voltage losses when used an extension cord to locate the solar panels away from the RV. In fact, you can easily add 50 feet of 12 AWG wire yet still have less voltage drop issues than the previous configurations. See the website for a good explanation as to why this is so. Also, the charge controller is upgraded from a PWM to MPPT controller, and the one used here is the Victron 75-15. Since we moved the charge controller, there is no longer a fuse between the battery and charge controller. It is highly recommended to place a fuse in this circuit of the appropriate size and type. The original fuse is now in the charge controller to solar panel circuit. It is really not doing anything here since the charge current will never be higher than the fuse rating so it can be removed if desired. However, more complex series and parallel solar arrays might warrant the fuse here, but that is beyond the scope of this discussion. Perhaps the best improvement in an MPPT controller is that it can accept higher voltages from the solar panels which allows you to put solar panels in series so you can build larger arrays. And we can still use the Furion Solar Inlet with the CN Linko adapter cable. You can purchase Renogy solar panels with or without a charge controller, so if you're upgrading to the MPPT controller, you will not need to buy one in a solar kit. If you buy the kit with a charge controller, you must disconnect it since you're using a charge controller at the battery location in the RV, and you can only have one charge controller active. However, having a PWM charge controller that came with a kit allows you to use a solar panel independently. For example, if you're not using the panel at the RV, you can simply reconnect the panel's charging controller and go charge your boat, vehicle, or any 12-volt battery. Pretty neat, eh? This is actually the configuration I personally use in my RV. It allows me to upgrade to a 200 watt system in the future and I'll show that in configuration 7. Configuration 6 is very similar to the one we saw in configuration 4 for the 100 watt SAE connected panel except of course a 200 watt panel is used. It is not appropriate to use the Furion inlet in this configuration due to its 10 amp limitation. You may also use an extension cord as done in the previous configurations, but to minimize voltage drop issues, make sure that it is no longer than 10 foot and a 10 AWG cable minimum. This further restriction is because the current output from the solar panels has doubled, so voltage drop issues are more significant. A 10 amp charge controller will not work in this case. All of the previous configurations used a single suitcase solar kit. The last two configurations will use two suitcases. Configuration 7 is where things kind of get interesting. When using an MPPT controller, we can put a second panel in series, which doubles the voltage. This allows the panels to supply 200 watts of power, but still only output 5.5 amps. Therefore, the Furion Solar Inlet Port and CN Linko adapters can still be used. And since the solar panel current is still 5.5 amps, we can use an extension cord up to 50 feet by using 12 AWG wire. In fact, if you compare this to configuration 5, you will see the only thing that's changed is the addition of a second panel in series. Notice that the input to the charge controller, though, is now 36 volts where it was 18 volts before. It must also be repeated that only an MPPT controller can be used when you put panels in series. A PWM controller must be the same voltage as the battery. And while you could connect the panels in parallel, which would allow you to use a PWM controller, I discourage the use of this because you are going to make the voltage drop issues more severe. And that's kind of one of the reasons MPP controllers were developed so that you don't have those issues using PWM controllers. Also realize that if you've kept the fuse in the charge controller to solar panel circuit, that many of the automotive type fuses are rated to 32 volts DC, and you may exceed that voltage, especially if you have several panels in a series parallel configuration. There are fuses that exist that are specifically designed for solar power and have a 1000 volt DC rating, 
Those would be appropriate for circuits that are greater than 32 volts DC. And finally, in the last configuration, we can achieve 400 watts by using two 200 watt panel kits. And if we have an MPPT controller, we can wire those panels in series as shown here. However, all of the Renogy suitcase kits, at least that I'm aware of, are pre-configured for parallel operation. So when we connect two such kits in series, we in effect have a series parallel panel array. The two panels in each kit wired in parallel and the two panel pair kits wired in series. As a result, the 200 watt panels, which have a 18 volt 11 amp maximum, will be added together for a 36 volt 11 amp maximum at the input to the MPPT controller. And as you might suspect, if you have a Furion style inlet, you're going to have to upgrade that to something more than 10 amps, such as the SAE type inlet connectors. Also, since the 400 watts of solar power can provide up to 26 amps of charge current, we must also upgrade the Victron controller we were using because it was limited to 15 amps of charge current. So we're upgrading to a Victron 130, which will allow us to use all of the current produced by the solar panels. Finally, we should limit any extension cords we use to 25 feet 